Hi, welcome to Deep Recaps. Today's film is the atmospheric western horror hybrid, Bone Tomahawk. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and enjoy the ride. It is the 1890s, and the American frontier is still wild. Two bandits kill some campers in a dryland. Their names are Buddy and Purvis. After committing these murders, they start relieving the dead of their possessions. Their unholy act is disturbed by the sounds of horses galloping. Guessing that officers of the law are on their way, they run away. They reach a secluded clearing where the trees are decorated with human skulls and the ground with an ominous relic of stone. It's a Native American burial site. As they try to pass through, a man in all black shoots an arrow at Buddy. Then he proceeds to kill and disembowel him. Purvis runs away, scrambling with terror. In the small town of Brighthope, Arthur O'Dwyer, a foreman, is sitting around with an injured leg and a sour mood. He has a wife, Samantha. That night, Purvis arrives in Brighthope and buries his loot. Meanwhile, the town's sheriff, Franklin Hunt, is cooking a disgusting brew of soup in a kettle, while his deputy, Chicory, comes in and informs him about a man he saw burying something. Chicory thinks that the man and his actions were suspicious. So, Sheriff Hunt and Deputy Chicory go over to the local inn, where the man is supposed to be staying. The aptly named Sheriff Hunt starts to question Purvis about who he is and where he's from. Purvis is scared, drunk, and stupid. Sheriff Hunt notes that the man is making defensive statements despite not being accused. Things escalate when he tries to run away after knocking down Chicory, but Sheriff Hunt shoots him in the leg and the two of them drag him away. Sheriff Hunt tells another townsman, Mr. John Brood, to call the doctor. Mr. Brood finds that the town doctor, Dr. Taylor, is apparently exercising his liver with alcohol. So, he takes Dr. Taylor's equipment and goes to Samantha to take up her medical service. Arthur gently reminds John not to make any flirtatious remarks at his wife. At the town jail, Deputy Nick handily beats Chicory in a game of checkers. Samantha arrives just then and treats Purvis. Sheriff Hunt puts Nick in charge of the place and leaves with Chicory. After Sheriff Hunt leaves, Arthur reads a love letter that he once wrote for Samantha. This is about as sexy as things get in the Old West. Elsewhere, Buford, the stable boy, hears the horses fretting around, so he goes to check, and, as some of you might have seen coming, he is killed. The next morning, Clarence, the innkeeper, goes to Sheriff Hunt to inform him of Buford's murder. But the bad news doesn't stop there. He also says that no one is in the jail, not even Purvis, the prisoner. So, the two of them, along with Chicory, go to check. They find Buford's body mangled and disemboweled and the horses missing. So next, they go to the jail and they find it empty, as informed. Sheriff Hunt retrieves an arrow lodged in a pillar and gives it to Chicory to show to the town professor. Sheriff Hunt then goes to Arthur and informs him that Samantha has been abducted. Arthur is furious, and they all go to the local inn to discuss the matter. The professor, a well-educated Native American, also arrives. He says that the arrow belongs to a primitive cave dweller tribe. They have no name and no language. He says that they are different from other Native Americans because they are terribly inbred and cannibalistic. This is H.P. Lovecraft's wet dream. The professor points out an approximate location of the cave dwellers, while adding that they are extremely dangerous and ruthless. So, Sheriff Hunt and Chicory prepare to go on a mission to rescue the abducted people. Arthur insists on coming to save his wife. Mr. Brood, being a veteran of the American Indian Wars, joins the party. Lorna Hunt, Sheriff Hunt's wife, does not want him to go on such a dangerous mission, saying that the sheriff's duties have their limits. But Sheriff Hunt has his responsibilities. Plus, he doesn't want to look like a wiener in front of his cowboy friends. So, the four men depart. That evening, as they get ready to sleep, Mr. Brood surrounds their camp with a line of bells, in case anyone approaches them in the dark. As they sit down to eat, Arthur starts crying in remembrance of his missing wife. That night, an animal crosses the bells, and Mr. Brood is the first to pull the trigger on it. Mr. Brood is a stone-cold son of a bitch. They continue their ride the next day. Arthur is struggling with the pain of his wounded leg, so he dresses it with some alcohol. Alcohol dresses everything. Sheriff Hunt realizes that Arthur is carrying opium. Ooh, even better. 
so he and Chicory demand it from Arthur, as using it will cause his mind and body to go dull. So, Arthur gives up the bottle. That night, as they sit by the fire, a man comes to them. With the party pointing their guns at him, the man introduces himself as Ramiro with an associate. When the men come forward, Mr. Brood shoots them. Sheriff Hunt is angry at him for shooting without cause, but Mr. Brood says that the men could have been scouts for a raiding party. He asks Mr. Sheriff not to question his morality or his racism. They get up and set up camp in another place that is more defensible. As they sleep, Chicory reprimands Mr. Brood for killing those men, but Sheriff Hunt shuts them up and they all go to sleep. Much later, Arthur wakes up to the sound of muffled screaming. He sees Mr. Brood being attacked and shoots the man, killing him. Another man escapes with the horses. Mr. Brood was stabbed near the shoulder, but he's fine. His well-trained and extremely disciplined horse apparently resisted the bandits and got shot in return. So, Mr. Brood puts it out of its misery. The party makes a new plan to walk in the night and sleep in the afternoon. Since Arthur has an injured leg, he walks on ahead, but his leg is too painful for him. The others catch up to him by morning and go on ahead of him. He reaches camp in the afternoon, two hours after the rest of the team. Thus, he gets less rest than the others. At twilight, they prepare to walk again. Arthur is still struggling with his pain, so Mr. Brood mentions that when they get to the cave dwellers, he won't flirt with his wife. Arthur gets furious and punches Mr. Brood, but this hurts his leg further. Karma is a bitch for everyone today. His leg is too far injured, so Sheriff Hunt commands him to stay back and says that Arthur's leg needs to be amputated. But Arthur does not let Chicory do that and instead asks for the leg to be set. As the men go to work on his leg, Arthur apologizes to everyone for lashing out and asks them to keep his wife safe. They feed him some opium to dull the pain. As he sleeps, they leave. That night, the three remaining men hear some eerie noises that sound like horns. So, they become paranoid. Chicory asks Mr. Brood why he hates Native Americans so much. Mr. Brood reveals that his mother and sisters were killed by Native Americans when he was just 10 years old, and that left a lasting impression on him. The men find horse tracks and recognize a distinct hoof pattern from the ones stolen from their town. They follow it to a secluded and narrow path. Mr. Brood goes in first, with Sheriff Hunt and Chicory following close behind. They reach a dry land with a wide cave atop a hill. Suddenly, they are all struck by arrows and stones. The cannibals attack them, and one of them manages to chop off Mr. Brood's hand with a tomahawk, made of a bone. A bone tomahawk. Chicory and the sheriff quickly shoot them dead. Mr. Brood does not want to live as a cripple, and he does not want to learn to touch himself with his other hand, so he asks for his rifle and dynamite to take as many of them with him as he can. Respecting his wish to die a noble death, and because they're happy to be rid of this goon, Sheriff Hunt and Chicory leave him. Soon after, another cannibal comes and throws his tomahawk at Mr. Brood. The sound of a gunshot fills the air. Meanwhile, Sheriff Hunt and Chicory are ambushed by some more cannibals, they knock them both out and drag them away. On the way, Chicory sees that Mr. Brood is dead, with a cannibal also dead at his feet. The cannibals take Sheriff Hunt and Chicory to the cave and put them in a cell. Samantha is also there in another cell. She says that Deputy Nick is not well and Purvis was eaten. Just then, their leader comes in and takes Nick out. They strip him while Sheriff Hunt tries to break free, but the bars are too strong. The leader of the cannibals then scalps Nick and tears him in half. Later, Samantha asks them about Arthur. Chicory says that Arthur got injured a few days back and that they have left a trail for him to follow. Hearing that her injured husband is being led to such a dangerous place, she gets angry. There's a good chance Arthur could save them all, but I guess Samantha doesn't think very highly of her husband. They calm her down and ask about the cannibals there. Samantha says that there are 12 males and two females who are blind and crippled. With the three they killed, there are now nine males. Sheriff Hunt reveals that they have opium. Even Samantha starts to regain some hope from this. Elsewhere, Arthur finally wakes up and follows the trail, but the pain is still too strong for him, so he takes some opium, which dulls his mind and body. So, he finds a secluded place and passes out. I guess Samantha was right about Arthur after all. 
At the cave, Sheriff Hunt pretends to drink the opium, and Chicory pretends to ask for it. So, three cannibals snatch it from them, and drink it, turn by turn. They do not like it, and throw it into the fire, but they have already taken sips, and Samantha says that two of them will sleep for a long time. But that still leaves seven of them for Arthur to face, and Arthur is still high as shit too. Meanwhile, two cannibals find Arthur and attack him. They miss, and Arthur kills them both. He sees they have some sort of whistle embedded in their throat, which they are using to make an eerie sound when they scream. Arthur cuts it out and keeps it. He reaches the narrow strait and sees signs of the earlier struggle, so instead of going through the narrow path, he goes over it. Then, he plays the whistle. One of the cannibals comes to him, and he kills him. He then drags himself to a height, from which he sees the burial grounds of the cannibals. At the cave, the cannibals come in with one of their men, who's been knocked out by the opium. They open the cell, and Sheriff Hunt tries to fight them, but he and Chicory are easily overpowered. They cut open Sheriff Hunt's stomach and puts his whiskey flask in it. He yells in pain, but he should be thanking them. Now he doesn't have to drink that disgusting stuff. Samantha looks on helplessly, while Chicory says that he will avenge him. The leader shoots Sheriff Hunt's wrist, then takes aim at his manly jewels. But the rifle has not been reloaded. The leader works the rifle until he figures out the reload. Just then, Arthur shoots one of the cannibals outside. Sheriff Hunt tries to warn Arthur, but the leader shoots him. So, Sheriff Hunt chops off his foot, and Arthur shoots him. Then, Hunt chops off his head. Sheriff Hunt says that he won't make it and will stay back to kill the remaining three males, since they know about Bright Hope and might attack. Arthur puts the rifle in his hand. Sheriff Hunt tells Chicory to say goodbye to his wife for him. They slowly walk away, with Arthur testing the safety of the area with regular blows of the whistle. From a safe distance, they hear three gunshots ring through the air, the sound of Sheriff Hunt's last stand. Subscribe for more content like this. Turn on notifications if you'd like to be the first to see new drops, and leave a like to help the channel out. Also, I'd like to apologize to my writer and editor. I forgot how disgusting this movie was. See you next time.